In an excavation in the depths of the earth, archaeologists found a strange, frozen creature. This creature appeared to be a human being, but the most surprising thing was that next to him was the body of a huge T-Rex. Everything seemed to indicate that in that exploration, they had found a man from the Jurassic era. That strange man was frozen in a mineral that kept him in perfect condition. The caveman had not aged and remained young and strong. Apparently at the moment he was frozen, he was fighting against a huge T-Rex. It was a discovery that shocked the whole world. The news headlines talked about it, and everyone wondered if it was a man or a beast. This caught the attention of the US government, so they took the caveman and brought him to their secret facilities, where they began to study him and named him Pickle. However, no one could deal with him, as he was very aggressive. The scientist in charge was unable to calm Pickle, and only succeeded in angering him further. The poor guy was injured after confronting Pickle, but luckily he made it out alive. The soldiers even used a robotic suit to try to stop the caveman, but it wasn't enough and Pickle smashed that military weapon with his bare hands. Fortunately, at that moment General Stridum arrived on the scene to try to communicate with Pickle. The general asked to be alone with Pickle, took off his military uniform, and sat in front of the caveman to try to calm him down. He knows that Pickle may not understand him, but he knows he will understand his good intentions. The general tells Pickle that he will take him to a place with men so strong that they will give him a lot of fun. Clearly, he was talking about the underground arena in Japan. Pickle doesn't understand what the general is saying. However, he understands that the general has come to help him, so he accepts his friendship. And while that's how the prehistoric caveman is taken to Japan to meet the strongest men in the world, Pickle is taken to Japan by the US Army. There the press was waiting for him. In fact, this was to be an event broadcast worldwide. The media talked about Pickle as if he were a newly discovered species. Pickle didn't know what was going on and felt uncomfortable being surrounded by so many people. Everything was new to his eyes. Suddenly, a reporter approached him and tried to interview him. She wanted to be the first to talk to the caveman. This was clearly a bad idea as Pickle could not control his animal nature, and what no one expected happened. Pickle pounced on the reporter and unleashed his wild instincts on her. This shocked everyone present, but no one dared do anything. The soldiers tried to stop Pickle, but all their efforts were futile. They hit him hard, but this didn't even tickle the caveman. After showing his wild nature, Pickle simply lies down and goes to sleep as if nothing happened. Everyone witnessed this shocking moment. Baki also saw what Pickle did and was perplexed. The world debated whether Pickle should be treated as a human being or as a beast. While this was going on, the soldiers took him to a military base to keep him away from civilians. That same night, other underground arena fighters arrived on the scene to meet the prehistoric cavemen. Retsu was anxious to meet this specimen who was undoubtedly very strong. The Kenpo master sneaked into the facility using the shadow technique. With this technique, he was able to copy the movements of a soldier to such an extent that he became invisible. What Retsu did not expect was that Dopo and Katsumi had also arrived on the scene. Jack Hanma and other fighters also appeared, but everyone was perplexed to see that Yujiro was also there. The ogre entered unseen and stood for a while observing them in silence, however, after a while he decided to join them. Yujiro humiliated Katsumi by removing his shoelaces in less than a second. The ogre told him to go play in a corner while the adults talk. Katsumi could do nothing but stand there helplessly. Yujiro belittles everyone present and tells them to stand aside, as he will be the first to test Pickle's strength. He starts walking and effortlessly breaks through the fortified glass barrier that was holding Pickle captive. The caveman didn't know what was going on, but he gets excited when he feels the power of Yujiro. The ogre extends his fist towards him and tells him that he will make him feel his emotions through strength. Both of them fist bump and compete to see who can knock the other down. The caveman felt Yujiro's strength and compared him to one of the most dangerous creatures he had faced in the past. Yujiro is surprised that Pickle tried to use his own technique against him. However, the ogre manages to defeat the caveman but only by a small difference in physical strength. Yujiro was also very surprised to see that Pickle was an extremely strong fighter, although he lacked martial arts. This confrontation was very interesting because Yujiro was really impressed that Pickle was able to match him in physical strength. The ogre realized that Pickle had no knowledge of martial arts, and therefore it would not be fun to devour him at this time, so he decided to leave this fight for another day. The military arrived on the scene and forced everyone to leave the place. Dopo and the others have no choice but to obey the military's orders. The funny thing is that Yujiro was the one who asked them not to take Dopo and the others to jail and let them go home. And well, all the underground arena fighters are escorted out of the place in an army vehicle. 
After this peculiar encounter, Pickle is taken to the underground arena, where Mitsunari feeds him and keeps him safe from reporters. Baki and the others had only one goal, to fight the cavemen to prove themselves. Retsu was the first to go to test Pickle's strength. The Kenpo master told Mitsunari that he didn't mind being Pickle's food, but to please allow him to fight. The old man agreed and the fight took place in the underground arena, but without an audience in the stands. The fight was only observed by Mitsunari, General Stratum, and Dr. Albert Payne. The fight started quickly, and Retsu attacked Pickle with all his techniques. The difference in physical strength was very noticeable. However, the Kenpo master kept attacking without giving the caveman time to breathe. Retsu kept attacking for a while, however, Pickle didn't receive any damage, and with a quick move, he managed to bite his shoulder with his big fangs. This fight was very interesting because after a while of fighting, Retsu realized that he had no chance of winning. Chinese martial arts were not effective against Pickle. This hurt Retsu's pride and made him desperate to the point that he started throwing random punches. He was no longer using martial arts, he was simply trying to survive. Eventually, Retsu realized that he was making a grave mistake in abandoning Kenpo and came to his senses. But although he fought with everything he had, Pickle knocked him out with a powerful attack and proved that martial arts would not be enough to defeat him. The caveman ate Retsu's right leg, but before he knew it, Dr. Payne injected him with a substance that put him to sleep. It is worth mentioning that it was the same substance with which they defeated Yujiro during the Ultimate Tournament. After the fight, Retsu is taken to the hospital where he realizes that he has lost a leg. He begins to feel depressed, but just then Baki appears to give him some words of encouragement. I like this friendship that Baki and Retsu have developed. Let's remember that Retsu helped Baki when he was poisoned by an Aggie. After the fight, Pickle goes for a walk around the city. Everything is unfamiliar to him. Pickle can't believe that there are no longer dinosaurs inhabiting the Earth. Despite that, he is excited to explore this new world. In the middle of his walk, Pickle met Hanayama. Our dear Hanayama arrived accompanied by his gang to try to stop Pickle. This was to give Baki time to arrive at the place. Hanayama and Pickle had a brief confrontation. The caveman compared Hanayama's strength to that of a Triceratops, one of the strongest dinosaurs of the prehistoric era. It wasn't a long fight, but at least we could see that Hanayama could rival Pickle's brute strength. Finally, Baki arrived on the scene and convinced Pickle to accompany him to the underground arena. Here something happens that left Hanayama and Mitsunari in shock, as Baki started talking to Pickle, and it seemed that the caveman was understanding what Baki was saying. However, while Baki was talking, Pickle suddenly attacked him with a powerful kick. The kick was so strong that Baki flew several meters and fell into the stands of the Colosseum. In the end, the fight did not take place because Baki was knocked out after Pickle's attack. This was one of the biggest humiliations Baki suffered, because he let his guard down and suffered the consequences. Mitsunari went to visit Yujiro and told him about what happened with Baki. The ogre got angry upon learning that Baki had been defeated with just one blow. He says that the brat has no excuse and that it's not the first time he has been defeated due to his overconfidence. But in spite of that, he says he is sure that Baki will not sleep for a long time and he will surely seek revenge for that humiliation after all, Hama blood runs through his veins. Next in line was Katsumi Orochi. He heard about what happened to Retsu. But despite that, he was determined to fight the caveman. I really like the evolution that Katsumi has in this arc. In this part of the story, Thagaki gives him a couple of chapters where we can see his development as a character. I love that he has matured a lot since his fight with Hanayama. Now he's not as arrogant as before and shows that he's matured a lot over time. Before his fight with Pickle, Katsumi masters the whip strike with which he is able to break the sound barrier. In fact, it is Kakukayo who helps him master this technique after a request to Retsu. The secret of this technique was to imagine that the body is composed of hundreds of joints, as if it were a real whip. I almost forgot but before Katsumi fights against Pickle, Dopo tries to stop him as he doesn't believe the boy is prepared to face such a dangerous opponent like Pickle. In fact, Dopo tries to restrain Katsumi by force, but the young man knocks him out with a strike to the throat. Dopo was worried about his son, but in the end, he realized that he was a man and could make his own decisions. Finally, the day of the fight arrived. The underground arena was packed with people. Several of the strongest fighters were also there to watch this fight. Katsumi started attacking with his full repertoire from the start. He hit Pickle with his whip strike, and it seemed that this time the caveman felt real pain. Pickle related this pain to the one caused by the tail strike of the T-Rex. This technique was very powerful, but it had serious consequences for Katsumi as his hands began to break with every blow he gave. 
Despite this, he didn't give up and used his legs to continue attacking. Katsumi imagined that his body had thousands of joints and this made him think that his body was as flexible as a whip. The truth was that this was not the case and with each blow he delivered, his body suffered significant damage. Katsumi's blows were so powerful that a great sound could be heard throughout the arena. Pickle began to adapt to Katsumi's blows and they no longer did him any harm. Despite that, Katsumi kept using the same technique over and over again without caring about the consequences. At that point his hands and one of his legs were already in very bad shape after using that technique many times. Katsumi was desperate to defeat Pickle, so he didn't mind sacrificing his injured arm and used the whip technique once again. That blow was so powerful that it managed to knock Pickle down however, Katsumi shattered his own arm with that last attack. The reality is that what caused the damage was not Pickle's body, but the power of the sound barrier. Before touching Pickle, Katsumi's hand broke the sound barrier with a speed that only military airships have managed to surpass. Obviously, the human body would shatter if it collided with that wall at high speed. However, the joy was short-lived for Katsumi as he realized that Pickle was simply sleeping and not actually been defeated yet. Katsumi smiles and since he had no strength left to fight he says that he is willing to give his life to Pickle. He tells Pickle that it's time to put an end to this. The caveman goes on the attack and with one swift movement rips off one of Katsumi's arms. In tears, the caveman holds Katsumi's arm between his teeth as he considered him a worthy opponent. Mitsuneri tried to knock Pickle out with the same darts that had put him to sleep on previous occasions. However, Dopo stops him before giving the order. Dopo says that doing so would be disrespectful to his son since he agreed to be eaten by Pickle and his decision should be respected. Fortunately, Pickle decides not to devour Katsumi and keeps his arm as a trophy. This fight is one of my favorites because it showed us the great development that Katsumi had as a character. Even Baki recognized him as a formidable fighter. Later, Dopo and Yujiro talk in a bar. They both drink beer while Dopo talks to Yujiro about how bad he feels about almost losing his son Katsumi. He was so happy to see him become a martial arts master that he forgot he was his only son. The two talk for a while and discuss how amazing it is that a creature like Pickle is alive in this era and how lucky they are to be able to see it with their own eyes. Baki was getting ready to fight against Pickle. However, while he was training, he received a call from Mitsuneri, informing him that someone had already taken his place. Jack Hanma didn't want to wait any longer, so he burst into the underground arena while Pickle was resting. Jack came to confront Pickle, even though there was no one watching. Only Mitsuneri was present, and so he called Baki to inform him of the situation. Jack tells Pickle that he probably won't understand his words, however, he will make him understand with his fists. Pickle felt excited by Jack's presence and agrees to fight with him. Both fighters go on the attack and collide in the middle of the arena. This is a biting contest, Jack and Pickle were biting each other's face at the same time, but only the one with the stronger jaw will win. Pickle manages to lift Jack with the strength of his jaw and with a quick move leaves him in this condition. Jack was in shock and was surely feeling immense pain after sustaining that injury. But despite that, he immediately got up and delivered a powerful punch to Pickle's chin. The punch was so strong that the caveman went flying through the air. Jack realized that this blow did not do anything to Pickle as his neck was too thick, and it was thanks to this that he resisted the impact. Baki and Retsu arrived just as the fight was going on. Baki was so frustrated because everyone had robbed him of his chance to fight Pickle. But despite that, he arrived on the scene to see if his brother was able to defeat the caveman. Jack was furious because Pickle had stolen part of his face, so he wanted to retaliate by eating Pickle's ear. The caveman became so enraged that he started acting very strangely. Jack tried to attack, but realized that his fist couldn't reach Pickle, as if he had moved away in less than a second. Jack was in shock because this seemed impossible to him. The caveman increased his strength and speed in a matter of seconds. Now he was far superior to Jack. Pickle caught Jack off guard with three powerful punches to the chin. The blows were so fast that they happened before Jack even hit the ground. Finally, Jack was knocked out and the caveman took the victory. Pickle began to dance to celebrate his victory, something he had been doing since he fought against the dinosaurs. Baki was determined to stop the fight to help his brother, but fortunately, Pickle decided not to attack and went to sit in a corner of the arena. Pickle sensed that if he approached, he would be in great danger, and indeed, Jack was saving one last attack that we could see when Mitsuneri approached him. The attack consisted of attacking the enemy with his two middle fingers as soon as he approached. Luckily for the old man, 
He was very small and managed to avoid this attack. But despite his defeat, Jack was not going to accept that humiliation, so when he woke up, he went straight to ask Pickle for a rematch. At first, Pickle was very scared and tried to run away from Jack because it was incomprehensible to him that this person had come back from the dead. Pickle had thought that Jack was dead, which is why he was so frightened to see him return. However, the caveman also had pride, so he agreed to fight him again. The second round did not last long as Jack was weakened and was an easy prey for Pickle, who defeated him quickly. After his second defeat, Jack was determined to face Pickle again, however, Baki crossed his path. Baki explained to Jack that this was pointless and told him to please stop. Baki also told Jack that Pickle took him to the top of the building and hung him like a trophy. This means that unlike Retsu and Katsumi, Jack did not earn Pickle's respect. To the caveman, Jack was just his food. These words make Jack scream in frustration, however, he finally understood that the fight was over and he had lost. Mitsuneri tells Yujiro about this and asks if he thinks Baki will have any chance against the prehistoric caveman. Yujiro says that they are both very different and that Jack's defeat proves that his blood is not pure. Here we can see that Yujiro still doesn't consider Jack a worthy opponent. The ogre trusts that Baki can win, but even if he can't, a defeat will only make him stronger. After a couple of days, Baki finally arrives at the underground arena and faces Pickle. It was funny because Baki wanted the fight to be without an audience. The only ones in the arena were Retsu, Hanayama, and Mitsunari. This fight was too long in the manga, and for different reasons, some consider it the most boring of the arc. What happened is that Baki dominated most of the fight as Pickle was not used to fighting someone with a fighting style like Baki. The caveman was forced to use techniques he had never used in his life. Baki was not an opponent he could defeat using brute force, and this frightened the caveman who did not know how to face such a small and skilled opponent. Something interesting is that here we could see that Pickle is able to activate a type of power where his body adopts an animal form, his bones and muscles are transformed to give him a more terrifying appearance. Although in this state his strength increases, he is still unable to use martial arts techniques, and that was a disadvantage as Baki continued to dominate the fight for another while. At the end of the fight, Baki made the same mistake as the first time and let his guard down. Pickle may not understand some things, but he is no fool. In fact, he is very smart and took the opportunity to attack Baki by surprise. It was the first time Pickle had used a martial arts technique. The caveman grabbed Baki by the arm and slammed him to the ground. The impact was so strong that Baki was knocked unconscious in the middle of the arena, which ended the fight, and Pickle emerged victorious. And well, after the fight Baki is examined by Dr. Kuraha, and it is here that it is revealed that Baki has a different brain than a normal human. According to Dr. Korha, Baki's brain was shaped like a face, the face of a demon. On the other hand, Pickle stayed in Japan, where he will live from now on. The truth is that this is one of the shortest arcs of the series. Only four important fights took place during all the chapters that Pickle's arc lasted. After this comes the Baki vs. Yujiro fight, which is the longest fight in the whole series. So. I promise I will upload a video about that part of the manga very soon. We are very close to finally see the premiere of the second season of Baki Hanma on Netflix, and it will be in those episodes where we will see the prehistoric caveman fight against Baki and his friends. For now this has been all for my part. Now tell me what you thought of the video, and tell me what other videos you would like to see on the channel. And well friends, thanks for watching the video, don't forget to subscribe if you liked it. I hope you have a nice day or night. See you soon.